Hello, I'm violinist Hannah Wilmer and today I'm doing a little tutorial about think patterns and position changing. So I find that um, that's probably one of the most difficult things for people to get their head around. Where to put your fingers to play in tune and per key, how do the finger patterns change? So on the piano, when you learn a key, it's the same each octave. So you learn G major with an F sharp and that is exactly the same keys as the next octave and the next octave. However, on the violin, each octave has a different finger pattern. So um, it is good to know the keys, but on, in addition to that, the most important thing that is often left out of most people's musical education is the fact that it depends what the tonic is, what finger is playing the tonic, um, as to what your finger pattern is. So the tonic of a key is the name of the key. So if it's D major, the tonic is D. If we're in C major, the tonic is in is C. Now, whatever finger starts that tonic, whatever finger plays that tonic, will determine your finger patterns. So we're going to deal with the very first finger pattern we learn, which is open string, finger, gap, and then third finger right next to it. One zero one two three next string zero one two three, and that is when the tonic is an open string or full finger. So if G string is the tonic, D string is the tonic, A string is the tonic, or E string is the tonic. So we're going to start on D major and see if you can join in with me. D one two. That is eight notes and we're now at the tonic again. So we go all the way down and that is our scale. <clears throat> and that is very simple. Our next one we're going to look at is when first finger is the tonic. So <clears throat> if we're in first position, that could be A on the G string, E on the D string, B on the A string or F sharp on the E string. Um, and then what we what the finger pattern will be is gap, gap together. One, two, three. So it's basically a gap between all the fingers apart from full fingers right next to third. So we're gonna do E major. And that is when first finger is the tonic. We're going to come back later on and make this more complicated, but first of all, everything in first position. Now, the one people find the most difficult is second finger is the tonic. Um, <clears throat> what that will be is every finger spread out. Now, if you're working with something like B flat, F natural, C natural, those sort of things, what that means is first finger's got to spread out right back to the end of the fingerboard. However, we're going to play a really difficult scale today, which is F sharp major. Lots of people do not like this because there's far too many sharps in the key signature. However, all you have to do is this exact finger pattern, which is all of them gapped. So a gap between every finger, and we're going to go up until we hit the next tonic, which is eight notes up. So start with F sharp, G sharp, A sharp, B. C sharp, D sharp, E sharp. So I'm hitting my leg there with my bow. So now we've hit the F sharp on the E string and we just go down. And that is a simple scale. It's literally all our fingers spread apart but people find that one very difficult. The final one we're going to do is, start with third finger is the tonic. For this one, second finger hates third finger, so it goes back next to first finger. All the way up eight notes. So we start with third finger on the D string. Once you can play all of those, 
Um, you can play pretty much any scale for one octave and in first position, but it's not so difficult to make that into two octaves. If we start with the open string scale on G major, so just play a G major scale and then stop on the next tonic. What finger is playing that tonic? It's the third finger, which means if we're going to go up another octave, our second finger goes back for the new octave. If we were to play another octave, if we have more strings in, and so we could play in first position, second finger is now the tonic and so we spread the rest out. So simply playing lots and lots of octaves means each octave you just have to be aware of what the tonic is and what finger plays the tonic. Now if we're position changing, say D major two octaves. This is an open string so we start off with our regular finger pattern. And I'm going to slide up for third position there. Now first finger is playing the D, but now slid up, you can see there, so that means we've got our first finger tonic finger pattern, which is that one, gap, gap, together. This can also be true if, say you want to play in position, so E major will normally be first finger is tonic, but supposing I was playing it up here, and I'm playing it with third finger, that means... Oh, sorry. <laughs> Let's go once more. So any finger pattern can be achieved in any position. Um, how this affects a piece? Well, if we're playing a piece in, um, and we don't know what position we, what finger pattern we should have in position. Looking at the key should be give you a big clue. So if it's in D major and suddenly goes up into third position, we know that it is just a gap gap together finger pattern. How do we learn it? Well, there's multiple ways, and I think that you should learn it in every way. So understanding it is a great way to actually understanding those principles is key. And then repetition means that it comes second nature to us. A bit like the alphabet, when we first learn the alphabet, we can understand it. But over time, repetition means that we don't even have to think about it anymore. And that's like everything we do, learning to drive, um, multiple skills like that. We initially learn all the basics. We learn the principles and then repeating, repeating, not stressing out about it. And gradually over time, this becomes ingrained the more and more we do it. Um, the really cool thing about violin is that this helps us learn to transpose. So on the piano, if you're transposing from F major to G major, you will have to play completely different keys. Whereas on the violin, we can actually play a tune in position and it is pretty much the same. So a good example of this would be the opening of Twinkle Twinkle. That's in... Now, if we wanted to move that into F sharp major, I'm doing exactly the same finger patterns. I just moved my first finger up to the F sharp. So if my tonic is the first finger, I can transpose any key playing exactly the same finger pattern, just keeping that tonic on the note of the key. So let's think if I was to put it in G major. I'll put my first finger on the G. Um, and then simply all we have to do to make it minor is lower the sixth note. And the third note. So transposing on the violin, and this is, I believe, why it's used for folk so much. It's pretty easy to transpose, just like the human voice, whereas so, um, instruments with keys tend to, I mean, I talk to them, they probably actually find it easy after a while, but um, to transpose like the human voice, it's very easy on the violin. So what is not easy is, originally we have to learn every finger pattern for every octave of a scale, but we've only got four fingers, so really when you think about it, we only have to learn four finger patterns. Once we can do that, then we're laughing because we can play pretty much anything. So hopefully you subscribe, watch all my performance videos, and I'll catch you next Tuesday. Bye.